Hey everybody, Paul here with another quick tip tutorial for helping you make comics using Blender. Today I'm going to focus on customizing your grease pencil settings and how to import a custom brush into your current project. It's a real time saver that should help you streamline your workflow. So opening up Blender fresh, what we're going to do is delete everything here and go into front view by hitting numpad one and we're going to create a new grease pencil object. I'm just going to create a blank grease pencil object and in the grease pencil object data, I'm going to open up my viewport display and under canvas, I'm going to, uh, oh, let's go with scale one, but offset one in the Y direction and give this 10 subdivisions. Under my viewport overlays, I'm going to disable the grid and I'm going to enable the canvas. And this gives us a canvas object that is, well, because our uh, default settings are metric, the scale is one meter by one meter and it's offset one in the Y direction. This is basically like a, a meter canvas, okay, if you had to go real world. But you would have noticed that it always faces our viewport. We want to lock that um, to the front view. So the way we do that is we can go control tab, enter draw mode, and we want to lock our view to the front. So now when we rotate, you can see that it looks like a canvas that is got a very real world type of setting. So go back into front view and we'll zoom up and straight out the gate, you can begin to draw because what this does is it enables a default material and even without any layers, the second you begin to draw, it will create a new layer for you. Uh, these draw layers are very much like Photoshop layers. You can basically wrangle your layers in the grease pencil object data the way you would layers in Photoshop. So that's fairly easy to understand. But what we're gonna do today is modify the material to make a custom blue line, a non-repro blue line brush that we can then import into um, an existing project or another project. There's two ways of viewing your um, tools in, uh, in Blender 2.80. One is you can go to this top tool shelf here, which gives you a very good view of everything, including the options, the curves, uh, display settings, or if you prefer, you can click view up here and under the first three options, we've got toolbar, which is the uh, the left hand and the right um, uh, bars for, for various tools. But we've also got tool settings, which will enable a another row, another tool shelf to come up here with a lot of the same things. I generally like to have this tool shelf up here so that I can work on my materials and layers over here. That's just me personally. So we're gonna leave this material because we need to come back to it for an example. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add a new material and I'm gonna call this non-repro blue. Now this stroke, I'm going to leave it as a mode type line, style solid, and I'm gonna change the color to something that I know is very specific. And this is the hexadecimal four non-repro blue. It's a very pale blue. And uh, the history of this is basically that people would draw with this type of blue line pencil and then they would ink over the top. And when you photocopy that, the blue doesn't show up in the copy for your final um, reproduced inks. So it's a color that I generally like to use in digital to differentiate my sketches from my inks. That's all looking well and good, but it's, it's very smooth, isn't it? Because the defaults we'll have a radius that is got pressure sensitivity automatically put on there, as well as a strength that also fades with the pressure. I'm gonna switch that pressure sensitivity off so that only the radius is, um, is going to be dictated by my uh, Wacom tablets pressure sensitivity. So we want to also uh, create a new brush so that we don't override this draw brush. Um, I'm going to show you over here because it's a lot simpler to, to view. It's, it's a lot larger. Uh, and we're going to hit this number two over here and we're going to change this to non-repro blue. I'm going to click this uh, this material here is now assigned to it, but what we wanna do is pin it. And so the way we do that is we click that pin 
and I'm going to click on that shield as well, what this does is it makes that uh, material, um, it gives it what's known as a fake user, which means that even if you're not using that material, uh, it will always show up when you reopen the file. Blender's got a nasty habit of deleting anything that it's not using at the time, and sometimes you forget to do this. So that shield, as it were, kind of protects it. We've pinned this because now this material will automatically work whenever we uh, select the non-repro blue. So I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna go to draw pencil, okay? And we can switch back to material over here and you can see that it draws in black. But the second we go over to non-repro blue, it will automatically switch to that non-repro blue material without you having to switch the material. And it's a really handy little shortcut for using grease pencil this way. Now, I wanna do a couple more things to sort of make this type of pencil line stand out. So let's go ahead and erase everything by, I'm gonna select the erase stroke. So every stroke that I go over gets erased, not just the points, we go back to pencil. Okay, and let's go and uh, draw ourselves a stroke. Switch back to our material here. So I'm gonna go into my options here and under post-processing, I'm going to enable randomness. I'll, let's give it to, uh, a point one of a randomness and I've got to enable randomize as well. So we're going to give it a bit of a jitter. Uh, maybe the pressure sensitivity uh, dictates some of the randomness and some of the strength maybe. So we've got to have both of those enabled. And now when we draw, we can see that the randomness has been applied to the stroke. It's a little bit too random. So maybe we want to knock this back a little. Yeah, that's a little bit better. You can even play around with the amount of strength and the jittering so that it responds to the pressure sensitivity of your tablet, okay? So you can get really fine tune, you can really fine tune that brush. And once you've done that, you've got all of these wonderful settings. So then you've got a new project and you wanna import that brush into that new project so you can draw with your custom brush. How do we do that? Well, it's a simple appending process. Here's how. Uh, I've got my uh, new uh, canvas all set up and all I need is my custom brushes with my custom materials. Now, um, all you gotta do is file, append, and then I go to uh, the file that I created, in this case I called it brushes, and there's a folder called brush. Underbrush are all of the defaults, but also the ones that I've created. So whatever you call them, they will be saved right there in the file. I'm gonna click on non-repro blue. I'm going to shift click non-photo red as well. This is another one that I made in the same way. I click enter, and now I can see them there. They've got a little zero because they haven't been uh, assigned a fake user. And so as you assign them, just click that shield on the color and the pencil, so that now they've got that fake user there. Um, but you're ready to rock and roll uh, with your custom brush right inside your new file. Okay, and it's automatically uh, added a material there as well. So why don't we go ahead and do that with the non-photo red brush on the shield there as well. And you can see that the material has already been added to our materials list. That's really handy um, because it's imported along with the brush. And uh, you'll, you'll be ready to, to go off and, and draw. And of course, you know, you can shrink that radius down uh, to, to something quite small. If you just wanted something finer as a brush, you can further customize it if you wanted to. Um, but, you know, it's always good to have sort of like a library asset file that you sort of keep aside with a bunch of brushes that you create. And then you can just sort of import them as you need. So I hope you got a lot out of today's quick tip tutorial. The accompanying working file is available through a link in the notes below this video. If you liked what you saw today and you wanna see more of these sorts of videos, consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. And if you're feeling at all generous, why not join the ranks of uh, supporters over at Patreon? Their generous support each month make the production of these videos possible. Okay, thanks for watching guys. This is Paul signing off. Bye for now.